just recorded a bunch of stuff and I thought, whatever, this is the intro. Um, you're about to watch, uh, if you stay tuned, a strange video where I'm painting uh, over a painting surface that was left here in the in the studio and talking about bipolar disorder. So it starts off a little bit slow and whatever, but you know, I hope you stick with it and wish me luck on my first video's learning experience. So thank you for your patience. Enjoy! Having a little a bit of medium hypomanic symptoms. Um, I don't really ever discuss that on this. Well, I'm probably gonna post this on multiple Instagrams, but um, what I'm referencing right now, because this is where I'm gonna put this video first, is um, my art Instagram, Jenny Wheeler Art. Um, so I generally don't. Uh, or have not yet really discussed that that much. It's in some of my posts and hashtag my blur artists and that kind of stuff. But um, I haven't done any like videos, I don't think. Although some of my little weird uh, autobiographical self-portrait videos kind of deal with some of those concepts. I also generally don't give you guys tons of explanations about those. Um, but anyways, I actually have no idea if this, um, headset is recording well or if the audio is going to work on this. Um, and I'm not going to lie, I'm probably also not going to double check that. And if it's weird or whatever, I'll just post it. Um, I'll just post it with no sound or something. I'll do something creative with it, just whatevs. Um, but yeah, so I'm experiencing some um, mild, more like irritating hypomanic symptoms, even though I'm not irritable. Um, and it's essentially a physical symptom that I get from time to time that um, generally, unless it's accompanied by racing thoughts, does not actually... Um, indicate a more severe swing on the way or anything um but it's uh i call it the case of the bouncy bounce it's because it's kind of coming calming down right now um i feel a little bit vulnerable when it's happening so i generally um i uh i have yet to ever actually really record myself when it's happening because it tends to kind of cause a little bit of like um i guess like uh kind of impacts people a little bit differently than like some of my other symptoms. I don't know if it disturbs them more or if it just like creates a high anxiety. I mean, it kind of puts people off if they don't know me because I sort of seem, I seem really anxious. I seem really like, you know, that person on the side of the street who's like, rocking back and forth and stuff and I, and maybe it even makes people feel a little bit unsafe I don't know um but that's not what it is at all um it's not how it is I'm not hallucinating I'm not like having whatever it's almost if you can imagine that your like physical energy gets turned up to 11 or maybe I guess yeah 11 um and your but you're not like some, um, let me finish that thought. So your physical energy gets turned up to like 11 and, um, and you just gotta like channel it or it might become a problem for you. So it's like, I move and move to keep it from being bottled. It's like a way I'm working it out, you know? Um, when I come to, 
this descriptor about my person, bipolar disorder. Um, I'm trying to come to it in a place, um, well, I come to it from, diff to diff from different places at different times, but in general, I view it as not, um, I don't really actually know how to say what I'm trying to say. Uh, even though I've said it a lot, um, I sort of come to it from this like, place, a, a place of dichotomy between knowing it's a disorder, it's something that affects me in society and makes my ability to function in society disorderly. It disorders my life. It is a way to describe my relationship to society in a lot of ways. Um, people with bipolar disorder are in every culture, in every part of the world. They are present in all faiths, all races, all genres of life. They're present in every kind of job that you can imagine. Um, it is something that affects people from everywhere. And I'm just giving you that kind of foundational information so that my next sentence doesn't actually sound like a uh, act of denial because it's not what it is, it's actually part of my acceptance process. Um, but if I were, and you know, bipolar disorder has been around for all time, also, like all human time anyways, all of our limited experience of time. Um, it's just like another way of being. So if I were in a different time period, a different culture, a different many different things, my relationship to the society that I was in and the belief structures that I was raised with that were the beliefs of my people, whatever the case may be, would be very different um, or possibly very different, both in some cultures negatively and then in some cultures more positively. I guess negative positive is not great, but just like, you know, in some cultures I'd be just treated differently because I would have a different role that I could play. So like here in our culture that I was born into in this like post-colonial Western thinking um, American culture sort of on the cusp of post-imperialism, not really all the way there, I think, maybe, but I'm getting totally off topic and I don't want to talk politics here right now. Um, but like in this culture that I'm living in, in this place, this sort of like, you know, very kind of our society is very structured in a way that does not necessarily leave room or like positive spaces for people whose experience is genuinely different from what's been accepted as the norm, um, which is not actually standard. Like the norm, the idea of like a normal mental experience of the world is so flawed in my personal opinion. I mean, 20% of fucking people, that's one in five people, are going to experience a mental health crisis in their lives. Now, tell me what percentage of people have to experience this particular thing to make it the normal. 20% is really high. Like, does it have to be a majority? It has to be over 50% to be considered normal, that's madness. And if it did, the only thing that I actually know of, of the human experience that would be normal would be being a woman, because it's 55% of the population on the planet. So in that case, <laughs> only being a woman is normal experience. So if you're a dude, sorry, like, about your luck, you're abnormal. But you did a great job at tricking everyone and thinking that you're the standard and chicks are abnormal. That was also political, I guess. I just can't, actually. As a existentialist humanist, macro, micro, everything is together in my brain. It's not all separated and categorized neatly. Anyways, back to our society. So 
um, and my disorder. So uh, the term bipolar disorder is, quite frankly, just uh, my experience is disordering to my life. It is a disorder in the way that I move through the world. It disorders my thoughts. It disorders my experiences, but that in part is because there's not really a role for this type of internal experience and external situation. There's like not a role for that in our in our world, in our society, in our you know post-colonial Western on the cusp of post-imperialist society, <laughs> right? It's like it's not there. There's not a good there's not a good spot for that. Um, a lot of conforming is necessary to be functioning in like, you know, the ideal ranges of success and whatever in our world. So that's, that's a thing. So I take medication and I do therapy generally, although I'm having a super tough time getting this whole therapist situation handled. Um, I have an appointment tomorrow on the phone that will help me get that going. Um, I have, like, called mental health hotline and stuff like that for somebody. So I'm not completely without therapy. Um, but I am also engaging in spiritual practices to help me stay balanced and staying self-aware and all of that. So I'm doing what I can do right now. Um, but this uh, bouncy bounce is what I'm experiencing right now. It's my symptoms. I don't have racing thoughts, although it's hard. Like, I'm kind of bouncing around topics, what probably seems like a little bit to you. If you have not talked to me in real life, um, might be seems like a lot. Um, but if you actually, like, know me and we've had conversations, then you'll kind of know that it's only slightly more than normal. Um, it's also... Uh, I was going to say, it's problematic when it is accompanied by, um, by like racing thoughts, which are not really happening right now. I am, however, talking very quickly, um, and that's a part of like the physical, uh, physical um, situation, the physical manifestation of what's going on here. Um, I'm working on. Um, I might keep a little bit of me off, off the situation here because I don't want to make any of you anxious. Um, but I am working on some paintings for this proposal for a mural um, in, on campus. Um, and I gotta fucking wait for this shit to dry. I was gonna just record the whole thing, but probably now I'm gonna bounce off the video. Um, so I just was starting these two because I've been trying to draw out my ideas and Normally, that's really uh, kind of good, um, but sometimes that's not good for me. And in this particular situation, I'm way better at painting when I'm like this than I am at, uh, at drawing because um, my drawing style tends to be... Actually, I wasn't even going to draw this in my normal sketchbook style. I was going to draw this in like a sort of together way. Um, this is the beginnings of it, uh, but um, I actually often draw in my sketchbook in a totally, totally other way. Um, I do these like little facey boys. You may have seen them. I've done a couple videos of them. But sort of like this, I do a lot of this. I do a lot of contourish drawings. Ha <laughs> cats out of the bag. They're not real contour drawings because I go back into them. They're not single line. Um, some stuff like this. But uh, perhaps that's where I need to do also. So um, essentially by...
sometime tomorrow. Um, gonna have these done and some other drawings and then um, I'm going to have holy shit I thought that was a caterpillar on the ground I'm really afraid of caterpillars y'all don't know that but it's real but it's just a green bubbly yarn um, yeah so I'm going to do these and have a drawing done um, for this proposal uh, that has really been hard for me to concentrate on um, but yeah so it's good um, it's okay what's going on hopefully uh, my inclination is that it'll be kind of over probably today or early tomorrow um, I think it's kind of triggered a little bit by this uh, uh, decongestions that I've been taking um, so I've been taking that to keep me from getting vertigo because I'm having some sinus problems on the right and I'm prone to vertigo now that I had it earlier this year I'm a little bit afraid of it so um, so another thing that I can do art is like always the way that I need to it's always a part of the recipe of managing any of my swings um, and I said I would be off camera a little bit for you guys so I didn't do this I'm sorry um, but that's always the way that I kind of um, it's always an element of my managing my mental health um, and I think that like everybody kind of has something that helps them that's unique to them whether it's like writing music or listening to music or poetry or photography or um, creating new outfits or doing makeup like a lot of makeup stuff or um, it's generally from like something relatively like you know creative but I can that I know of but I'm an artist so that's how people relate to me so I can imagine that there's people who you know doing math problems is helpful or trying to solve like you know those like equations that are put out as like you know challenges and you know I'm sure that there's like other things that like people who are more passionate about math could do or um, you know maybe people who are like really passionate about fitness find like working out super good a lot of times working out when I'm like this is really good um, also when I'm super angry like squats are great for me to channel like channel my anger that will keep it from becoming hypomania or uh, flatline depression you know if I sometimes I do I call them angry squats but anyways that's off topic um, so you know I'm sure that there's a lot of people who have a lot of different things I'd love for you to comment if you happen to be uh, someone who has bipolar disorder and you want to share with me what yours are that's very cool uh, you can send me a direct message or um, you can just comment on here you know and uh, you know then other people might see it if you comment here um, if you direct message me I might share the information just without sharing your handle your information I'm not about to like out people the stigma is real for bipolar disorder and you know there's stigmas associated with a ton of stuff in our culture but uh unfortunately for some mental illnesses the stigma is um sometimes almost debilitating and can ruin reputations and i've heard stories of people lose jobs and whatever and it's you know for bipolar disorder we're breaking it down all the time thanks shout out to vp hope magazine because they help with that um you know, and uh, a lot of celebrities come out and talk about it, which is super helpful too. Um, but a lot of times a mental health stigma can be really, uh, I'm saying I'm a lot, but I'm sorry, <laughs> can be really detrimental to somebody being able to manage it, you know, this, uh, I'm reading the mind mindfulness, I'm theoretically reading because I can't seem to concentrate on reading too much. The, uh, the mindfulness for workbook for bipolar disorder right now and um, so I'm leafing through it and going to read it it's on my reading list I keep it with me presently so that when I'm in a mindset to do that and I need it it's there and today I like leafed through and stopped on this page and the page was about accepting your bipolar symptoms to the level that you are actually welcoming them 
and this was super relevant to me, not just right now that I'm experiencing this like annoying symptom. Um, I have some friends, people in my life, and one person in my life presently and someone who helped me in the past with this particular type of symptom, uh, and I don't really have that available right now. So, um, but the, ooh, off topic. So this mindfulness um, bipolar book, workbook, talked about accepting your disorder condition, you know, the way you move through the world as being something disorderly. Accepting it to the point of welcoming it. And for a super long time, I've been in what I considered at the time to be like full acceptance of bipolar disorder. I'm well aware that I would not take a cure if one were presented to me. If I could get a shot to cure my disorder, I wouldn't take it, uh, which is, might sound weird to you because it has actually caused me to have to go to the hospital and it's ended relationships of mine from <laughs> the vast majority of them actually. Um, but it's also allowed me a sense of empathy. It's allowed me insight into the human condition. It's been the vehicle that has helped me help others. And so wouldn't give it up. Uh, I may change that perspective in the middle of like the most desperate depression or something. I would have to be in that state to take a cure if it were offered, but a cure is not present at this time. And I think that it would probably, it probably never will be. And I believe that because of my belief and understanding that my brain does function different and shows up different on brain scans. Now, I scan my personal brain, but studies have shown that. And uh, I think it's just a difference. I think that people are not homogenous. I think that variety is literally the spice of life. It's also the fuel of life and that as a collective species, as a whole, we need those variations uh, for different things, you know? People with bipolar disorder, you know, make a difference. People with schizophrenia have you know, put forth beautiful, wonderful things that have helped society. You know, there's a professor with schizophrenia at U of M, the inventor of the time cube. But before that, he was, before he went off his medication, he was a really successful professor who lived a full life. And he made the choice to go off his medication and put out this theory called the time cube. You can Google it and find images, but the website was taken down uh, a few years ago or maybe, maybe even maybe even like 10 years ago, eight years ago. Um, but as an artist reading it was like amazing as someone with um, you know, a mental health disorder, an illness, uh, which I do accept it as an illness in some regard, but uh, I think disorder is more fitting of a word. So uh, schizophrenia is a little bit different. Um, studies are starting to show that it may actually be an autoimmune disease and therefore, hopefully, one day, actually curable for people because it is, it's a different situation than bipolar disorder. But I was only using it as an example because I know of that, that uh, mathematician professor or physicist professor, I can't remember exactly, who invented the time cube theory, which is wild. The theory is wild. But as an artist reading through it, as somebody who has, you know, is classified as having a mental illness. It was really kind of a beautiful thing. Um, his theories are, you know, flawed. The math is flawed. I hate for that sense. But it is beautiful as like an art piece and an example of the variety. Um, I don't look at it when I look at it as entertainment, although some people have. Um, I do look at it as a beautiful picture of how minds can work. So, got way off topic there and relatively have stayed on topic, I think, although I may feel differently when I look at this after my mild hypomania has passed, you never know. Um, but yeah, I did realize 
recently, I, I touched on this for just a moment earlier. I'm not looking at cue cards, by the way, I'm not looking at cue cards and I didn't write out an outline, which I hope to do for future videos, especially when I, um, when Crystal and I get uh, eccentric wheelhouse off the ground, we'll go a little more orderly, unless I'm in my disorder, and then who knows. But I felt like I was in full acceptance. And then this past summer has made me realize that like everything else in my life, the acceptance part is going to be a wheel and a cycle. And I'm going to go through periods of time, like this summer, where I struggle a lot and I get mad about it and I get upset about it and I really just don't want it, you know? And that's kind of a mindset that I've been in. So I think today, being how it's been and reading that section of the book and have well my phone cut me off so I guess we're done um I will try to post uh I have no idea when my phone turned off but that's a problem for another day this is just like whatever it is so I'm gonna go and keep you posted on these I might not work on them until tomorrow and who knows when you're gonna actually see this video or tomorrow's videos so uh, you know you'll get stay strong you'll get through this whatever this is uh, that you're going through in life and I hope you glean something from this if nothing more than to see somebody share an experience that normally is not shared but hopefully there was more but even if it was just entertaining Sorry if the bouncing was agitating. Uh, it was not my intent to increase anyone else's anxiety. It's often why I isolate when I'm like this. But yeah, so have a beautiful night. It's, ooh, it's 9.30, so I'm probably going to... Um, I'm not going to pack up yet. I'm going to work on something else. I uh, don't really want to drive yet. The bouncy bounce not good for the drivey drive, really. So we're just going to play this by ear. Might call someone for a ride later. I still feel like this. It's, it's slowing down, so I'm not going to predict the time because I'm welcoming symptoms. But uh, I, I hope not too late this goes on. If it goes on too late, I'll just take a lift and maybe you know, take a lift, take a melatonin when I get home, if I can find it. So uh, over and out, guys. Peace. Art heals and reveals. This has been Wheels. Have a nice night.